You ready? Well, first, Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Hello, mm. Holmes. Can you just yell go okay. when I should talk? Go. <laughs> Hi everybody, Jonathan Holmes back for another episode of Sup Holmes. I'm doing it again. Thank God. I've got a new set that'll hopefully make it less blurry when you when I wave my arms around and look at you. And we have Luke Bernard on, the famous, the world famous, the world renowned, the world known, and the world beloved. Luke Bernard on the show. Say hi to everybody, Luke. My world hated. <laughs> That's not true. People, uh, the people who know you love you, and people that give you, you, you are infamous for a lot of different things, but when people give you a chance, they always love you. That's been, been my experience anyway, and as they should. And you've got a new game out uh, as of January. Mecco Wars is on PSN for the PSP, is that right? Did I just freeze? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, well, that came out, that since it was a port, that came out in uh, January on PSP and PS3. That did, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, you can play that on the PS3, too? Yeah, since, you know, it's part of the mini program, which not many people used. Yeah, Remember when I yeah. Only did the mini program, and it didn't really work out, but I don't know why it didn't really work out, because it, it's, a pretty, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool program it was. It just, I don't know what happened. I don't. Yeah, step up from uh, Xbox Live indie games, I'd say, but not quite up to well, regular PS. Yeah, because you'd still have to go through the same process as regular PSN. It was the same. You still have to pay for the ESRB. It wasn't like the Xbox Live indie games at all. It was still you still had to be hmm. a proper game developer to do it. But I don't know what happened really. I think it's because I don't. I, think, I don't know either what happened. But it just seems that. Well, we were we were lucky since we got PlayStation blog mentions and that and this, but I guess just most people just didn't get. You know, we got the same treatment as a proper PSN game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the the consumer. Speaking as a consumer, I, I just didn't know what it meant. Like the fact that they branded it mini made me think like, does that just mean sucky? Is that what I should ignore? And people are so quick to try to yeah. uh, figure out what to not waste their time on. Like, people don't play WiiWare games at all anymore, even though there's some really good WiiWare games on there. It just got this reputation of garbage. And uh, PS Mini, I think, just had a reputation coming right out of the bat of uh, smaller or worse, uh, which is unfortunate. It's not the case. There's some great games on there. Um, and you're working on uh, a new game coming up soon, right? Uh, yeah, there's the Mecha Wars HD sequel, which is going to contain Alpha this month. Hopefully it might be out next month, you know, since I never really know, because we're basically like, whenever it, it looks good, but I think it's entering out for this month, so it should be out next month. Wow, that's really soon. And that's going to be on uh, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita? That's basically, okay, it's going to be first out on iOS, so iPhone, iPad, it will even support the old iPhones, maybe. I have to double check with the program. But we're trying to even support the iPhone 3G, which is the second iPhone. And we'll right. even be able to support Retina display on the iPad, whatever it's called, the new iPad at launch. So go oh, up wow. to that. And it'll also be on PC and Mac at launch. And then later, later in the year, it'll come out on Vita and PS3. Your accent is so charming. That's fine. I got distracted. Do you remind me of the little girl from the first Resident Evil movie? You know, the Red Queen? See you uh, later. I'm, I'm, I'm a little girl now. Now you want me to wear the vest. <laughs> well, you do have the innocence and charm of, of the youth combined with, like, the seasoned cynicism of, of someone who's been in the industry for a long time because how long have you actually been working on video games, Luke? It's, it's been some time, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, since now I'm an old fuck, I'm going to be 26 soon. Be, 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 <laughs> before, 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 before they used to be like, oh, 21 year old, now they're like, oh, this aging, this aging long head bastard. So. <laughs> but didn't you start? I, 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 you were doing art for games when you were a teenager, weren't you? Well, that was more like when I was a teenager, I was just hanging out around game dev forums, you know, like as a, as a, you know, like as a, I guess people just want to do games, I like just hanging out around them and trying to get games done. And they managed to get any done. And I think when I was 20, 19 or 20, I got my first cell phone game out for stupid cell phones. Oh. You know? And sure. then, then I just got into the industry. You know how it's funny how I actually got into the industry, right? 
was with Eternity Child. Really bad game, but doesn't matter. So it was bad, but it's funny how it just started out. Oh. It's just it started out as an XNA game. It did. Oh, that's right, and it was all uh, frame by frame, hand drawn animation, yeah. and your art in all your regardless of whether you like how they turned out. I think the art has really drawn people to all your games, and Attorney's Child still looks beautiful, if you ask me. And then it switched to you know, WiiWare. Just... Yeah? Yeah, basically, well, basically what happened in Eternity Child's fiasco, okay, so first it was X and A. First it had the programmer on Eternity Child when it was a good Eternity Child, was when it had the my programmer who I work with now, Sean, Sean Reed. That was right. a good eternity child in XNA. And at one point, I don't remember what happened. It just switched, just abandoned XNA. And then after that, because um, it was one of the first XNA games, so I guess it got some kind of press. And after that, I wanted it to be out on WiiWare. So I went up to a publisher and I was like, a WiiWare publisher? And I was like, hey, you want to publish this on WiiWare? And they're like, okay. Yeah, well, give me a contact. Okay, cool. 50 50? Yeah, sign this. Bam. Oh, and then we just. The initiative didn't come out. That really what <laughs> happened. <laughs> How can that be? There, that was like four or five years ago, wasn't it? They're still just. Did they go out of business or something? It was alternate, right? They probably did. Uh, I don't want to even mention about them because I don't want to say anything bad. They weren't bad guys or anything. Just I didn't know what happened with them. I just kind of just moved on. And I, I, look, I guess I looked like a bit of a flaky flake. It's coming out on WeWare. Out in all magazines, and then, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I don't think anyone blamed you for that, and you were uh, rightfully kind of upset with how the game turned out. You you put so much of your life into that game, and then when you finally wow. completed it, it was somewhat the painful for you. The funny thing, right, it still allowed me, actually, as much as it, right, at least for my first game, I had, like I said, a bad game. And after I haven't really done any bad games after, so in a way, it's kind of like, it's better to get your worst shit out at first, than, you know, yeah. last, when you've got, like, a huge budget, and then you create a big part of shit. So it's better that you learn your lessons first, you know, I guess. Yeah, like, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, the only thing which it didn't allow me to do was, um, have those publishers actually interested in doing a financing another game of, of mine, but then the Destructoid review came out, and they all backed out. You're kidding! We you ruined your life for a second? No, you didn't ruin my life for a second. I was quite well after. No, but what I was saying, oh. I just found it, it's funny now it is. That's like I hated Anthony Birch that much. I just kind of wanted to stab him. Oh, you really did. I remember that. Yeah, uh, that's and what I wanted he to... did. Yeah, that's I'm what sorry, I wanted to Oh, I shouldn't have seen that. That's just why I had such a personal vendetta against him before I did. Right. And you were 21 when that came out? You had just gotten old enough to drink. You were, I'm sure you were drinking at times. Yeah, and then yeah, some guy was. says, I can't remember what Anthony said about the game, but I remember the score was a little on the low side. Uh, right? It was one out of 10. He hated it. <laughs> I wonder how Anthony feels about that now, because he's now working for uh, Gearbox, working on, I think, Borderlands 2. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I love the first Borderlands idea. I'll probably get the second one. I will. Even if he's working on it, I have nothing against him. But at least right. now, now if he ever says, you did a bad game, I'll be like, you, you're working for the guys who did Duke Nukem forever. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's finally uh, turnabout. And you reviewed his game for Destructor. I tried to keep you involved in the site because... Yeah, I felt really no, badly no. at the time with it. it was, you know, you've always been a friend of Destructoid in my mind, anyway. You know what was funny, too, right? Everybody thought that I removed the Destructoid character from Eternity's Child, and they all claiming it as fact, but he never was removed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was never removed. He remained in there. He's still in there today. If you get the game on Steam, you'll see him. Oh, wow. Well, I, should, I should buy it on Steam today. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? Uh, don't waste your oh. money if I were you. <laughs> what time do we have? I can't forget questions. Okay, we've got a little more time before questions. So there's so much we could talk about, Luke. I'm up for anything. We could talk about uh, what happened to you after Eternity's Child because you worked, I think, in the social gaming sphere for a little bit, and now you're you're that back like with your past, own. Yeah, that was after. Eternity was it? That was maybe three years ago. Or three years That's ago. right. And then you were gonna hold off on making more games for a while. 
you were working on, I thought, a, a, an animation project. Um, am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, but there's so many things that you work on, basically, and you learn to shut up after a while because you work on so many things that never see the light of day, not because of you, but because yeah. of other parties involved all the time. That's, that's what I kind of learned I did. I mean, actually, after the Eternity Shadow, you just worked on mainly an iPhone, and you switched over to the iPhone, and then on iPhone, it's just... Um, I guess I kind of, nobody even remembered I did, nobody even knew I did Eternity Shield and Life, and so I just got a bunch of new, uh, sorry, just burped, um, bands oh, and all really those fun. things, I, I guess, and I just, uh, just started working on better things. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's, uh, your company seems to be continuing to grow, I can't believe how many platforms you work on now. How big is your, uh, company at this point? I don't know, me, Sean, has a number, maybe with five or six, or... Wow. I, 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 I can't remember, we aren't rich, we aren't. Like you see, I'm in my bed, I am. Right. <laughs> we haven't, <laughs> we haven't made it yet, we haven't, so... <laughs> that's it. still going, yeah, you didn't get... Yeah, at first you were discouraged, guys. <laughs> Paul, you actually announced you're quitting the game industry, I but you emo. bounced back. I was. I was trying to email fit. Yeah. How could you not be emotional? This was uh, the build-up of your entire life, and it kind of exploded in front of you. That must have been a huge deal. Well, I, I guess it's, it's really not that bad. It's, really, it isn't, because now it's kind of like, after that, you really don't give a shit to what anybody says. You know how a lot of game developers get all, all pissy, like, if their game doesn't score X, X much, right? Mm hmm I don't give a shit now. I, d I don't. <laughs> it's great. I, mean, I, I really don't. I'm more like, check, um... Because right now, I've never had a score for my recent games that's gone under six and a half. Mm. So, now I just don't really care. And it's weird, my programmer, yeah. her, her work with now, just doesn't care about reviews. Why he doesn't care about reviews? It's because, um, well, he's more of a technical guy. He is, and sure. he get he gets mad that Skyrim gets good reviews because it's buggy. So he just right. has a different point of view on things. So mm -hmm. he just, um, yeah, because they just don't care about reviews. Because my boy's going to like your stuff. That's just really it. So at the end, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Like as we as we saw, loads of people being mad at, at Mass Effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you see people get really angry at game developers or games, um, like people were really mad at Phil Fish for saying to a Japanese game developer that all all his games suck or all his country's games suck. People are mad at Capcom right now for their on-disc DLC that may even be uh, free on some consoles but for pay on others. People are mad at Mass Effect for the writing and for the programming. You're seeing all these kind of shit storms, I guess is the technical term for them. Uh, how, do you, how does it feel having been a part of a huge shit storm around your first game to witness these new shit storms going down left and right? And where do you weigh in on all those storms yourself? Well, well for Mass Effect, Honestly, uh, well, I, I've been playing the game. I looked up the ending on YouTube. I did because he just wanted to, and the ending's not that bad. I mean, it, it's 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 probably not the typical Hollywood ending which everybody was expecting, you know. But it's kind of like you can't really be mad at Bioware. It's Bioware's game and property. They can do, you know, if they want Shepard to be gay, like they made him gay. If you want to be gay, he's allowed to be gay. You know, if you want Shepard. To be, you know, a cross-dresser, you know, it's kind of their properties. They can kind of really do what they want with it. That's that's the thing. I can't, you know, you can't really be mad at a writer for, you know, doing certain things with their characters. It's their characters. It is. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's like when everybody moaned about George Lucas fucking up Star Wars. It's a bit like, well, hey, George Lucas didn't exist. You wouldn't have Star Wars. So if you don't like it, just ignore it. Sure, sure, sure. I think the thing of it is. With sci-fi and fantasy in particular, a lot of the fans, they aren't attracted to the story. They think they are. They think, oh, I love this story because when they have the story told to them, they feel great. But it's not the story that's making them feel great, it's the world. And when you love, fall in love with a world, you want to create your own stories for it. And you kind of have it in your mind how the story should go. 
And before you know it, you find out you don't actually care about the story and that kind of pisses you off when the story doesn't give you the feeling it used to. Uh, yeah. and, and with Mass Effect, it seems to me people just love that universe so much and the, the themes, but the story itself, eh, well, you're a big Mass Effect fan. How good do you think the story even is for those games? I think Mass Effect has, I might, I might, maybe people might hate me after, but I think Mass Effect series has the best sci-fi series ever. I prefer it than Star Trek or Star Wars. I prefer the Mass Effect world. I just like yeah. the world which they created, actually. I'm more obsessed with the art direction and the world oh, yeah. and, and the all smaller species, all the small, smaller things which are going on than anything else. And I guess people are just pissed off because Mass Effect 3 isn't really a typical, how can I say, a finale in a way because you can't really do any sequels with that kind mm. of ending it's a bit like oh this is the end of mass effect they can maybe do an mmo but they can't really do a mass effect 4 you know right so yeah yeah why... they is that I what people are angry about is that it's not final enough the ending i'm still not sure what people are mad about i know what they want to have happen which is a big Happy ending, but, which you don't... Yeah, yeah, if you have a happy ending, it means you can do sequels like Halo. Halo's got a fourth bloody one when they're like, third is going to be the last one. Oh, but wait, we're going to do a prequel. And probably Gears of War will get another bunch of things, you know? So that's like a more Mass Effect. It creates an ending where you're like, you cannot do anything more. It's kind of like mm -hmm. all the shit which got destroyed, it's like, well, there's going to be nothing much you can do after. And plus, you can't do anything as epic as the Reapers after. You cannot top right. that, so that's why they, they created like something which, that's why I probably think a lot of people are pissed, because a lot of people still want their characters to be able to imagine their characters to do sequels right, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they didn't want to see the sequels, you know, because if J.K. Rowling, for example, wrote a sequel to Harry Potter, because Harry Potter in his 50s, everybody would be bloody pissed, they would. Sure, yeah. But they still yeah. would, they'd, be, they'd be even angrier if Harry Potter would have died. Right. When That's they thought he died. Then. Yeah. That's yeah, it's very I hard to please. I'm sorry, go ahead. I know, no, no, it's exactly what you're saying. People are just hard to please and it's Bioware's game, so like they didn't do it. I can't like the ending idea. I can see how some people don't like it because they're used to happier endings and not being as weird because it is a weird kind of ending, you know, for a kind of like what is a blockbuster, you know, but mm -hmm. I don't think they'd be okay. They'd be okay. They just probably moan and just for you know they're probably forgetting a couple months they will, and you know they probably well, say I won't. Go on. I think that there's a passion people have for dissatisfaction these days. I was talking to uh, Jim Sterling, your friend of mine, about this the other day. Uh, in the '80s and '90s, uh, Randy Macho Man Savage used to go, "Oh yeah," and people loved it, just like a, a proclamation of enthusiasm. These days, people love to go, meh, or cool story, bro, or, you know, eh, not good enough for me. There's like a, a weird culture of, of unhappiness or, or not good enough for me attitude that uh, seems to really catch on on the internet. I, I think, people I cling to that. Mean, I think it's made just in the video game industry. I don't think it happens really in other industries. Because say, for example, you see Michael Bay. You know, you've seen all Michael Bay films, and those people still go see it, and they come out, they're like, it was awesome, even if it's not really awesome, you know? But they still say it's yeah. awesome. Well, the game's right. If a game doesn't get an 8, they consider it to be shit, and then they start throwing, you know, they go crazy. While well, most films, if you look at films on Metacritic, for example, most films are like, like have 4 out of, you know, 40 out of 100, or whatever it is, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Well, Two stars is a bad one. Yeah. Yes, well, I mean, it's for films, so I think it's just the video game industry as a whole. I think it's just, I think a lot of people in the video game industry just dislike to moan a lot. It is, I mean, not saying, you must, you must listen to them uh, sometimes, like, I always listen to what people have, like, constructive feedback, like, the first mecha was, they're like, oh, we want online multiplayer, so like, okay, I'm giving you online multiplayer, there you have it. That kind of stuff is cool, but if you're like, fuck you, your game sucks, well, you can't really do much to that. Sure, and it happens as a writer too. There, there are people who take great pleasure in telling me that they're dissatisfied with the fact that I took a perspective or used a sentence structure or anything. That they they just won't settle for anything but a nine or a ten. 
from their writers, from their game developers. It's a strange thing. I wonder why we're so picky. Why are video game people so picky, Luke Bernard? Tell me. You know. I'm sure you do. No, because I honestly oh. don't. I, I don't know, because I honestly don't care. I just buy whatever I like. I mean, trying to think of a video. Did you ever buy a really shitty game? That I regretted. Actually, no, I, I can't really think of really some games which are really, really that shit. Apart from. Um, no, I really, I really can't that, that I bought. But I don't really play uh, yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of really. It's really, really hard to find a really, 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 really shitty game. Well, what game was considered really shitty which recently came out? There's one game which was considered mm. awful. IGN oh, game. A Amy. Oh, yeah, Amy. Did you play that? No, I didn't. Well, after the reviews, no. Well, that was the point. They said that you couldn't control it, and it said there was no saving point. So that kind of, yeah, I understand. I do. Sure, when it's pure technical bugs and failures, it's one thing, but Deadly Premonition, for instance, I don't know if you played that. Um, I know that IGN. game, yes. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what you think of that. IGN gave it a 4 out of 10, Jim Sterling gave it a 10 out of 10, and people actually believed Jim's review over uh, IGN's and, and gave it, uh, and it actually sold much better after Jim reviewed it, because that's what I'm told. It's, it's uh, because it doesn't... It was a very particular game for a very particular audience, and you just can't, you can't really... The problem is, I think, is a lot of these reviewers and all that are probably just comparing, like, a game like Deadly Premonition to, like, I don't know, like a Halo. Instead ah, of sure. comparing it to what it is, you know, that's what they do with films and music. Because guess what, if they started mm. doing scores to music, you know, all the more music nowadays would be probably a 2 out of 10, because mostly it's complete shit. So honestly... Sure. I think we're just being a video game industry. I don't know why. People are just extremely harsh. The whole everything yeah. is because we, we're like the most, um, how can I say, we're like the most creative industry out of all of them. Mm -hmm. We are. We, we completely are. I mean, like, i just give you one, one example. Okay, Mass Effect again, right? Okay, the fact that mm -hmm. you could be gay in Mass Effect, have full of male on male sex, right? We, you would never mm -hmm. ever see that in, say, I don't know. Uh, you know, John Carter from Marcius came out, you know, side, big side sure. You'd never see John Carter take it up the arse, would you? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You wouldn't do... I, not that I've ever seen in a blockbuster. But Master Effect is, is mm -hmm. like the blockbuster effect of that and allows people to do that. So that's how come I think people, instead of hating Bioware, should more like applaud them for doing stuff like that. Like Bioware and EA even allowing that. So we are just more creative as an industry than any other... Yeah. Uh, any other creative industry right now. Music, all they sing about is getting dicks in mouths and, you know, sex and all that. And people go crazy as soon as there's like, you know, like two males have been sex in Mass Effect. I mean, you know, because you can't really see them doing anything, just like two bodies just right. like that, you know? So... Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a strange thing the way video games are... I think in terms of respect from the mainstream world, you know, the, the world yeah. at large, it's right next to pornography. Like when I tell people I write about video games, I get a lot of side words glances, especially from anyone over, I'd say, 40. Close to the same as if I like reviewed gay porn. They, they, they're not sure what to think of me. Whereas if I said I wrote about movies or music, oh, that's cool, you're in entertainment, but you're into video games, it's like... Are you creepy? Do you like collect toys, which I actually do? You know uh, the whole forty-year-old virgin deal. You get a you get a bad rep pretty quick. So we're coming from a place of insecurity, which probably has a lot of fans feeling a need to uh, overcome that insecurity by both bashing game developers and games, and also demanding only the highest quality of uh, content. And then on top of that, they're they're paranoid about video games looking. Bad and and a lot of people have bashed Mass Effect that I've heard for um, having man on man make out sessions. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that when I, when I looked up on YouTube, right? There's mostly dislikes on the video, and I was just like, oh, they didn't force you to be gay, just don't take the game out. Right, that's right. They give you options, which is what people say they want, but then um, in truth, what they want is a product that's going to make them feel good about themselves to align themselves with, and if they're homophobic or uh, yeah. self-hating because they're more gay than they want to be. There's so many ways that can go wrong. And then, I don't know if you'd want to weigh on this. We I didn't ask you this before. Um, 
But it reminded me of you. Uh, Binding of Isaac is a game by uh, half of Team Meat. Edmund McMillan, who you probably know. Uh, it got turned down for sale on the eShop. Not published. The, he didn't ask Nintendo to publish it. Yeah, he just yeah, asked yeah. it to be allowed to exist on the eShop. And, and you were going to make a game a while back called right. Imagination is the Only Escape. And Nintendo were, wasn't going to allow that on the DS. Is that right? Well, basically what happened that one, since that one, again, that one's more like on the hold. I'm actually hoping mm -hmm. to do it this year. I've used really? I've been, I've been putting it on hold instead of waiting until I get better, until I got better as a, as a, you know, as a director, developer, than, you sure. know, releasing a, a half ass product. So, right. what happened was, I, uh, basically, there's a lot of things going on, because what happened was, as Nintendo America were like, apparently, they just said they wouldn't publish it. I don't know okay. anything else, and I never really talked to Nintendo America, but I do know that Nintendo Germany, on the other hand, was supporting it, Nintendo Germany. And so the, the people in the, the watching the show or listening to the show, because this will be in a podcast too, don't know. Imagination that is the only escape was a game that took place during World War II. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And okay, uh, explain the rest. Kid. Yeah, you Basically, play as a Jewish kid. You played as a young Jewish kid, and instead of like most games where you're pointing to just kill shit and all that, you're just playing the from a kid from the point of view of how war really affects civilians and stuff, basically. It's more like to show the horrors of war rather than the, oh, I've got a gun and I'm playing Call of Duty, I'm going to shoot everything, you know? You know, instead right. of just, it was more like to show kind of like that, and I can't be reveal much of it, because if I talk about much of the plot, then it would spoil the game. But that sure. game, basically, it was also funny, the same thing with that game, right, is that I had all, like, pretty huge publishers come up to me about it, right? They were interested in it. And I was like, okay, you want to help fund this thing? And they were like, no, we want it to be done, and then uh -huh. see if it even is, maybe test it out, and then see if we would publish it. Then right. we're like, but you know what's kind of cool now? Now with the ability, the stuff like the App Store, the iTunes App Store and stuff, now I'm basically, uh, it's really easy to reach that huge broad market now, which I wanted for that game. So that's like I'm just waiting until, probably after, after the new Mecha Wars is like out, I'm going to go back into some side scrollers again. So I've just been waiting for that moment because there's a lot of tech behind our stuff because we're basically been creating an engine also the past years a 2d engine where you can have like shaders i guess i'm going into a bit too much nerd talk right now but no 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 that's that's uh you're you're working hard on uh technically to make your games look great which i think people want to hear uh when and i first saw imagination control yep. great too and also control yep. great too with the new engine also the advantage of us creating our own in-house engine of the past years that now works say for example New Mechors, right? We created it, bam, it's done. Within one click, we have it running on iOS, PC, Mac, um, Android. We haven't started Android, the Android port of the engine, but we might. So, say we could we could just, within one click, put it out on any single device, which allows us to have it, you know, not port it, and instead to have it out on every single platform. So that's what we've been working on, because I kind of want everybody, I didn't care about, my game is selling. I just want everybody to kind of try them. That's going to be. I don't even care if people pilot them. Like when uh, people put out the Mecha Wars PSP one, I was kind of just posting links on my Facebook for where to pilot it. <laughs> I didn't know you were doing that. Because <laughs> you just want people to play your games. Is that right? Yeah, I don't, I don't really care. You know, as long as I don't care, however, you. Because ultimately, a pilot is going to stay a pilot and you shouldn't, you know, go after them. That's just how it is. They might yeah. play a game one day. They might, but yeah, it's... <laughs> what an easygoing attitude you have towards your financial future and your your life in general. I yeah. mean, everybody's trying to fight against pilots, right? This, they're not going to win against. They just accept it. It's not really hurting yeah. sales that much. It really isn't hurting sales that much. As you notice, all the game continues to sell quite well. They do. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know more about it than me. I trust you on that. I'm going to see anyone chatting. Nope, no chats yet. Phew. What time is it? 
Yeah, I thought it's. Uh, I had an internal clock. They told me it was four thirty, so yeah, it's, it's chat time. time. Yeah, we'll take a question from Moldenite. Has Mr. Bernard played Journey, and if so, what do you think of it on yeah, on the PS? I haven't played it, but I've seen videos of it. Tell me what I think of it. I think it's. I don't know. I, I can't really. I'm can't really say much more than what everybody's already said. You know, apart from it's amazing, it's great, etc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it uh it is I'm yet to meet anyone with a real differing opinion about that game. It's it's a sign of quality when you've kind of sucked that many people in. I mean I, 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 I like it. I, I like I mean I like what I've seen of it. I do. It's just something well, I'm I'm just talking about talk about other games. You know how sometimes some indie games are a bit too weird? They become really uh -huh. artsy fartsy. Well not journey, because journey, you know, balance the doubt, but in some indie games are just too artsy fartsy for me at times. I don't remember which one it was. The Path? One, which... Did you play The Path? Or Dear Esther? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played The Path and Dear Esther, and. I was. I mean, it's. <laughs> I, I mean, I it's all in people... volume, Luke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just not my like... kind of thing. It's just, it's. Well, Dear S isn't really a game, it's more like an interactive story, but which is good, which is good, but the path... <laughs> <laughs> the silence, you have to understand, the silence speaks to me of just non-brain activity. That those just, games I just, guess, just like, non-experience. It's, it's, really, it's just not really my thing. I like, like I said, like stuff which kind of... It's just not my thing, those things. So I don't want to be like Phil Fish who said he hated... Japanese developers, but yes, you don't want them. No, I don't. Yeah, I, I, very I, of you. No, I don't. Want, yeah, I mean, I don't hate them. It's just not my thing. So instead, I'm just like, um, what is double? Oh, wait, there's another question there. I'm not supposed to say them. Oh, a new question. Oh, that's a good one. So we're you're, we're going to end that question by saying uh, artsy fartsy games just aren't your thing, which is code for you saying something no, more impolite. No. No, no, actually no? not. No, actually not. It's just not my thing. It's a bit like it's a bit like country music. Country music isn't my thing. Or a bit like You're gonna get, I don't know. People are gonna be so mad at you for that. Are you a religious, man, Luke? Do I'm so religious. religious. I look extremely religious. I basically <laughs> look like Jesus. All right, so you you wouldn't want to insult any religious people or country music fans or fans of the path. All right, they keep bugging. What does Luke think about Double Fine and how you bring adventure games back with uh with Kickstarter? That was a pretty amazing move, uh, I think. Uh, what's your take on that? Would you ever do anything like that? Throw something up on Kickstarter? Well, no, because everybody's probably going to start joining the Kickstarter thing they are now. Everybody's you know, going to try and copy Double Fine, and they, most people are going to look bad and fail. They are. Yeah, because yeah. D Double Fine can do that. It's Tim Schafer. It's Tim Schafer. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bit like if Spielberg, not Spielberg, he's probably not as big. It's a bit like if Spielberg was like, I'm going to go on Kickstarter. You know, of course he's going to get loads of money, Tim Schafer. You know, of course they all wanted an adventure game, bam. You adventure game, yeah. the guy who basically created the genre. Of course you would be like, give all that money. So it's completely logical what happened. It is. Sure. Um, I wouldn't even consider it like, how can I say, a big news thing. It's just so normal to me, you know? Huh, so you really expected it when you heard Tim Schafer was going to ask people for money to make a point-and-click adventure game. You thought he was going to do pretty well with that. Yeah, he would, he's Tim Schafer. The thing about him, though, is that he's a name, and people who are diehard fans of video games know who he is, but his games uh, rarely make money uh, these days. Well, from, that's, from what that's I mean. more... His games still do sell, if they do, you know? His games still do sell. Say that again? Soapy says? His, his games still, still do sell. They do yeah, sell. they do sell. You know what? Is I think it's just because, as you know, this Double Fine just now is doing smaller games. I think it's just before... They just did too many big budget games, which took five years, you know? So that's why when you do a game of five years with a big budget, and now you have Jack Black in it, um, sure. of course it's going to cost a lot of money, and, you know, it might not make it back or something. That's one that's thing cool. that, uh, when you were talking earlier about uh, 
the standards people have for their games and how you know they expect a lot out of Mass Effect and uh, how your programmer expects a lot out of Skyrim if it's going to get those scores. It made me think of the fact that people don't seem to understand that there's definite tiers of uh, video game uh, budget and and as such there's going to be tiers you can of uh, what you can expect out of the game and Tim Schafer to me fits really well in that kind of uh, mid-range budget tier when he goes high budget he can't make a game that's going to appeal to that many people he's got too much personality to be honest yeah. you aren't going to appeal to everybody you can't have much personality or else you're going to end up turning people off in the process you have to be Call of Duty or Halo or something that's just really simple and appeals to people on a really base level. Whereas um, Tim Schafer is uh, too too smart for that in a way. Not to sound snobby. Oh, I sounded super snobby, didn't I? Oh. No, I, I I just think Tim Schafer is just he just has his own crowd. You know, he has his own crowd. So it's just I think uh, like like Brutal Legend. I wasn't really that fond of that game gameplay wise because it's just uh, I was expecting something else. So I think it's just you're expecting something else gameplay wise, I expect like something a bit like Psychonauts, I mean, it was something different. So, I think and Psychonauts didn't do that well either. None of his, none of his games do. Which tier would you want to be in? Let's talk more about Luke Bernard because he's the interesting one, if you ask me. If you were to pick which I tier, you're going to get an interview from Tim Shaper. You know, you just said that. You can see his video. <laughs> he actually he's instructor anyway, so <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. He. uh he like gave us the finger the other day or something. He hates our website. I don't know why. Um, but if you were to pick which tier you were going to spend the rest of your career in, small, you know, small budget, but small uh, return, uh, small I, need. Are you asking me if I pick between being rich or broke? <laughs> I'm asking if you were to pick like doing um, the equivalent of like local TV pays the bills but you're not spending a lot of money on your show and therefore you don't need to get a lot of money back for your show or mainstream tv or blockbuster movies if you were to pick the game equivalents of those which one do you think you'd pick for the rest of your career it's hard right i have to, I have to stick with it that that's um that's uh, i don't know i mean i i just like to do things and hope it's successful i do i think of that's I would say I don't need to make millions, if that makes any sense. Well, picture having a million-dollar budget for your game, like Tim Schafer did. Picture if your next game was going to have Jack Black in it, and the amount of pressure you there you then have to make it a huge success. Well, what but the I potential would do instead, if I had a million-dollar budget, right? Somebody gave me a million dollars. Instead of just doing one game, I'd do several games because then at least right, right, right. One, of, one of them will probably, you know, make make money. The others might fail, but you have more chance if you do more games. I kind of, I kind of like to keep it on the smaller level, like, um, mm -hmm. like downloadable titles. I wouldn't. I'm not really that interested in doing a box game if that makes any sense. It's just too much. But I don't want to spend five years doing a game. That yeah, that sense. too. That too. When they when they cost all that money, you have to dedicate. Geez, five years. What is that? One twentieth of your life, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. And the, the downloadable games are making so much more money now. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Sword and Sorcery. That sold, I think, at 10 bucks a pop or 5 bucks a pop, uh, almost 400,000 units. And that was like a three-man game or something. So Wait, which there's really the potential. Sword and Sorcery, do you mean the iPhone game? Yeah. Yeah, it sold really well. I think it almost yeah, yeah. sold 400,000 units. So there is a way to be rich and keep it small at this point. And no, doing a lot of different games is probably the best way to do that, like you were saying. No, I mean, there is. I mean, the, it's just the issue right now is a lot of publishers and like that. They're all, every time everybody always follows, uh, what do you call it, the gold mine. Like before, everybody's doing mm. Grand Theft Auto clones. Uh-huh. All well, Grand Theft Auto clones, and then um, after that, pick up. Um, and now, right and now, the gold, rush. Yeah. gold rush of iPhone, remember that? Uh -huh. Motion controls, everyone was just, oh, throw motion controls in it on the Wii. And it yeah, all and now it's, a, now it's a um, gold rush of, what's it called? Of social games, which aren't even social. Yeah, you were, you were working on those recently, is that right? For an unnamed Japanese developer? You dipped your foot into the social game sphere? 
yes, basically, where it was with, uh, I can't really pronounce or even say, but basically, yes, was with a bunch of people in the social gaming world, and it was really, uh, oof, um, it's just a lot of, <laughs> it's just, uh, people are just mainly focused on metrics and those things, you know, like, how can I say, they're all kind of the same thing. The issue is a lot of social game, um, people in social gaming, not all of them, you know. It's well, you said thing. earlier they were like drug dealers. Well, yeah, because say, for example, like, you've got to get the person addicted. Say, for example, you give somebody a random person crack. Oh, here's some crack. And then you hope the guy gets addicted and buys more, more crack off you. And he's not even enjoying the crack anymore. He's only buying it because no, he's like... he just wants it because he needs it. So that's exactly the same thing. If you look at Farmville and all those games, you know, on your Facebook, but you don't have a Facebook, but, you know, they're all clicking that, I need a fucking better farm, or I need this object, but I do... You know, it's kind of like an addiction to these older women. It does. That's what they're... <laughs> and is that their, their strategy, being behind the scenes? Were you a part of well, no, meetings? No, 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 they don't exactly say that, but it's what I in interpreted from it. It is. So sure. How how were the? Yeah. Okay? I was going to ask what the producers were like. How you interpreted them for those companies? Well, one of them liked to yell at, at us a lot and say bullshit and shut up. But there was That's that. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. That was, that was, that was I mean, such a nice period, that wasn't. And um, they just, uh, some producers just think sometimes, when they don't understand something right, they'd rather rip everything out than try and understand it. Rip everything out, or just, they tend to think that we have an issue. What I notice is that they think that players are idiots. Oh, they okay. That, they think that they need to know where to click everywhere, that they can't discover it on their own, you know, and that's, yeah. that's, that's a bit too much the issue. And the issue is, social games are not social. Giving a fucking gift to somebody is not fucking social. Mm. That's, that's not really interacting with other players. Because uh, to yeah. me, like, the, the most social game I know would be maybe, well, one of the first social games to me would be Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that game. One of my yeah, favorites. Look, when you look at it, you're supposed to go town to town. You can go play with your friends. It's really, it's social. It's making you do shit mm. with your friends. At least social mm -hmm, game, but mm -hmm. it's making you exchange fucking props with friends. <laughs> well, social is a buzzword that is supposed to activate the minds of people who think they hate video games. Because the stigma against video games is... Oh, they're antisocial, they're for guys in the basement, they're for bachelors, they're for nerds. But social, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm being out and about, I'm being on Facebook and connecting with my friends, I'm a social Facebook gamer. That's is something... even worse than video games. Facebook yeah, they're just, they should be just called bad video games instead of social, I think. Well, no, uh, you know? no, not all are bad, not all are bad, but say it's just it's a, a good social bad. game. Then. Name a good one. Just one. Oops. Sorry, camera. Wait, wait. What's a good wait, social wait. game? Just one. Like, really good. Like, almost as good as, like, um, Animal Crossing. Other than, you know, uh, when I say social games, I mean Facebook games. Are there any that's even close to as good as A Animal Facebook Crossing? game, not an iPhone game. A Facebook game. Yeah. Let's stick with that for now. Keep it narrow. I haven't played I can't think of one. yet. I They're not good. Yet, which... They are not good. I guess that there may be, yeah, yeah, because I guess there is, um, yes, I'm seeing in the chat, I'm seeing that pop cap, yeah, because we just haven't found any, because pop cap games on Facebook are good. We can't deny that game being bad. I don't think of those as, those. do those attempt to be social pop cap games? Uh, I thought they were just kind of good little games in there. I guess kind of, but they are, um, maybe a social only game. A game which is just fine, just for Facebook, just trying to be social for Facebook. Yeah, there. Right, I'm thinking I like, like Farmville clones. Let's just say we just hate Farmville clones because then we just, you know, all right, every single one. That's yeah, right. That's right. It, it's it's so a lot of people are looking. A lot of small startups, like, are looking at because I have friends which work at different startups, right? Social mm -hmm. gaming startups. 
And instead of them, so they have games, you know, like instead of Farmville, right? They have it. It's called like Barville, not maybe Barville, but it's maybe like Pubville. It's the same thing, and it's maybe like a pub, right? You know? And I was always like, why are they trying? Why are these social game companies, startups, trying to go up against a giant? It's a bit like if you started a console developer starting off, and you wanted to create Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. It's just stupid. Just to you <laughs> it's like when it's that company I can't remember what they're called, but when Transformers Three comes out, they make Transmorphers yes. Three. When uh, Freddy versus Jason comes out, they have Zombie versus Knife Hands comes out, and uh, Hockey Mask versus Knife Hands or whatever. Uh, but those companies, as long as they keep it low budget enough, they make their money back. But creatively, they're completely wasting their lives. They're doing. Nothing but a poor imitation of something that's not even that good to begin with. Boy, is that sad. I'm glad you're not doing that. Whoa, look at all the things people listed. Cow clicker, <laughs> solitaire, blitz. Is that social, solitaire? I kind of thought that was antisocial, but what do I know? Um, someone wants to know if Mecha, Wears is, uh, Mecha Wars is going to get a level editor. Is that possible? That would make people feel great. I, actually, I was talking about that with my programmer because it kind of is possible, right? I mean, I would love to have one because I imagine that'd be really, um, you know, you know, really easy to touch with, you know, the iPad. You'd be able to molest the iPad and create a level editor or a level just by rubbing yourself against the iPad. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we, we could technically do that, but I've still got to see with Sean because Sean was basically like, because his issue, right, because with the level editor, we know it's going to be loads of penises to come up. All right. <laughs> I haven't seen the penises. I was like, yeah, that may be penises. It'd be funny. But then he was like... Would that change your rating or anything? If you do that? Yes. Yes, that's the uh -huh. issue which we've kind of got to look into. Because then it might be like, oh, it's only adults only, you know? It could be like... So that's why it might... We don't know. It could come in an update, maybe. It could. We've got to, oh. you know, see... It's possible, it is. I mean, I really want one, but... It just depends on the rating, because if we change our rating system, I don't know yet. Sure. I, I would see a level editor working best in a boxed product, because it will keep people playing your game um, and not reselling it, and therefore cause, uh, creating a used market for it and getting in trouble with that. Um, oh, someone's Master Dingo suggests Tiny Tower is a good social game. Yeah, that is pretty good. Omega Platinum. Fighting games. Yeah, fighting games are good social games. That's something I really wish you would do, Luke. I like to suggest things to my video game developer I companions. I a fighting game. That'd be... Can I fight a game oh, like your art... It would be... No, you could do it. I'll help you. Just what let about, me know. What about... Yeah. You, you got Skullgirls. Exactly. That's what made me think of you. When I talked to Mike Z, the, the producer of Skullgirls, his attitude towards comedy... The art of games and the design of games really reminds me of your own um, and made me and your character designs are so wonderful in all of your games. And you have all those characters you still haven't gotten to use yet. Like it's the Rose Princess, isn't it? With the, with the, and then with the rabbit and the, the pugs I mean, and all, the drinking. All these games, yeah, because I've got all these games. I'm just hoping to actually get them all finished off this year. Well, we even think at one point with my programmer, like we were wanting to do a big turn based strategy with all of them. But we, oh, I, that would be cool too. Yeah, because it's kind of weird. I guess we're doing people doing turn-based strategies now, since nobody really does them anymore. Right, right, right. But but you did with Mecha Wars and had good success with it. That's a good point. I wonder why people are uh, kind of shying away from that genre uh, for I whatever guess. reason. That leaves it open for you to do it, so that's good. Yeah, it does. It's, it's just awkward. It is. I know. Like, oh. You saw something on the, on the chat thing again. No, oh, I didn't see it. Is there a good chat? It's actually you can good. only have Oaken after inviting five friends. Man, that's social so games are so sad. That, that's what social games are, are like in a way. That's like I mean, it's such a shame, but actually, you know what's funny, right? I've actually been working with, um, I can't mention much about the gameplay details of this game, but working on a 3D game with this uh, publisher named uh, Crescent Moon Games, which I like. They're a pretty big iPhone publisher. You probably don't know it because you're probably not. No, no, no. That's awesome, though. You're working on a 3D game for the iPhone? 
well, we're actually hoping to also put it out on the Vita too. And we're basically, we are working on this this game. It's what we work on, or we've been playing it and all that. Uh -huh. um, it's like Diablo, right? So it's like top-down view, you know, you touch around you know, to attack and all that shit. Only it's got these huge social functions, which I cannot mention, because if I mention they would try stealing them. Sure, so basically, sure, sure. it's... Um, it's really social, like truly social. It's how I view a social game, basically, is what it, that, that's awesome. what it is. Is it, uh, uh, would it be, you could announce whether you plan to do multiplayer though, right? Would it be social in that way? Yes, and in other ways, which I cannot mention, but I can But at the very that. least, multiplayer would be in there. Yes. There will be Sounds something good. new. There will be something new in the gameplay. Actually, be something extremely new in the gameplay. And the kind of... Uh, how can I say? You know, most of the Diablo shit, you just go off. You know, Diablo-type games like Torch. Like, you just go off and just kill stuff and all that, right? Yeah. In, in this one, you could more like... How can I say? Without spoiling it, so nobody copies us. When you go off on quests, you can get shit, which allows you to build more shit. But it allows you to build really cool shit. But I can't mention what kind of shit because after people are trying to steal that shit. Right. Oh, so if you say shit a lot and say good, people will get excited for you. That was good. Good technique. You just cut, I just, you just cut out. I have a. That's the same thing I heard. <laughs> That's too bad. It wasn't that good. You, you, it, we'll leave it a mystery for them, just like you're being mysterious with the social aspects of that game. I'm hoping, from what you said, that it will be a game where you loot, you farm, you kill, you get stuff, but by collaborating with other people, you'll be able yeah, to create farm. even better. I hate farms. I want to shoot farms. <laughs> well, not farm, like hoeing and sawing and, you know, but, you know, uh, to cultivate, I should say, instead of farm. Cultivating is fun, right? No cultivation. No it's not. It's not. No. No cultivation. No farms. None of those things. Uh, it, it's. It's. It's what I view a social game. That's anything I. I could really say. I'm also working on other games with them with the same publisher. Oh yeah. They basically, yeah. They, they basically develop all the games. I like, direct them and help. You know, do all those things. Um, How many games are you working on? That's like four games. Four. Oh yeah, I'm talking. Maybe in my microphone. No, I'm talking. How many games are you working on? Four, five, six, seven? Let me calculate. Uh, right now, to say, I think it's three. Yeah, three. Three? Mecha Wars 2, unnamed uh, social game for iPhone and maybe Vita, and then another game? And then you're going to work on yeah. Imagination is the Only Escape, and maybe The Rose Princess too. And maybe a um, multiplayer uh, turn-based strategy game. I mean, a multi-character. That, 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 that was more just an idea. I'm going, that was more just an idea. The last one that was. That okay, was, I shouldn't get too excited about it then. No, Thanks. don't, don't. No, uh, yeah. So the third one is just basically it's a Metroidvania title, right? The third one in 3D. So I'm not. It's not my normal team looking at it. It's like the same publisher. You know, uh -huh. we're also doing that RPG with. And that one's basically taking one of my old designs, one of my old designs for the game, for the game which was supposed to be financed until the Eternity Child review came out. Oh! So that game. So basically in that game, right, that was a Metroidvania. All I can say is the difference is you control a character in that game where your character is harmless, you know, you, well, not harmless. I mean, you have no... You know, you, you, you get killed in two seconds, right? Because okay, so more on the powerless side. The character. Powerless, yeah, powerless. And you have to kind of like build these mechs which allow you to do stuff, and then basically it's the mechs which allow you to do stuff and like in the world and all that, instead of the character. Because it's harmless. Not harmless. That sounds awesome. That sounds really fun. I, I really enjoyed uh, Metal Warriors on the Super Nintendo as a Konami game, where you just played a little guy, almost like um, Blaster Master, but you went from mech to mech and can build up your mech and steal mechs from other guys and stuff like that. It was a, a really nice dynamic of switching between feeling really vulnerable and powerless and feeling really overpowered 
uh, balancing between the two made yeah. both feel yeah. uh, much stronger yeah. for the uh, see, juxtaposition. Basically, I, 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 thought, I thought it was really unique at first. Yeah? Because I was like, yeah, nobody's ever done this since somebody told me blast them off. And I was like, oh. <laughs> But that was like 20 years ago. And I'm sure you'd put a new spin on it. I mean, people... People uh, aren't doing games like that very often at all, especially compared to how many first-person shooters or 2D platformers are suddenly big again. I actually wanted to ask you what you thought of Rayman Origins, because when I first played it, I thought this was the kind of game Luke looked like he was hoping to make, but he didn't have the, the resources. Um, but I thought of you almost right away. What did you think of that game? I was that game. I got that game needed launch, and I played a lot of movies. I actually loved that game, I thought you would. Yeah. yeah, I mainly played it like in multiplayer. I did that game. I have nothing much to say about it apart from it's great. Oh, that's all I wanted to know. I just like to be right, and I thought you'd like I, it. I, now I, I know. I, I just wish there was online there was in it. That's well, it. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. When you get a boxed product like that, you expect online, and it was originally not a boxed product, but. They felt like they would make more money at retail because they didn't expect to sell well, they did. a lot. They did. Anyway. It did well. They sold all right. Yeah. They, I don't know if they hit a million units yet, but considering the budget on the game wasn't too big, I think they made their money back, which is encouraging. Yeah, Any more questions? Oh, five-minute warning. The show's almost over, Luke. I always do this. I get caught up in conversations, and I forget that almost an hour has gone by. Uh, so we have about four minutes left. If any, Say that again? So what should we say in the last four minutes? Well, I like to ask the people if they want to do any questions, see if there's any last-minute questions. If not, this would be the time to reveal the big news or say the thing that you want the world to know for sure. Uh, I can take that and edit it into a clip and put it on YouTube. Okay, then. This is your time. This is all you. I'm just going to say whatever you want. I, 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 don't, want, I don't want to talk alone because I just be awkward. Okay, so now I can reveal okay. to the world. I'm yeah. actually a woman. I had a sex change. <laughs> You're dashingly handsome, Luke Bernard. You know, you've got you 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 uh, meld the long hair and the, the the beautiful eyes that one would get with a Betty Davis with the the rough, rugged George Clooney esque uh, scruff and square jaw. You're kind of a Betty Davis plus George Clooney to me. Yeah, well, it doesn't really get me any jobs to be honest with you. It doesn't make publishers love me more. Your looks don't help you in the in the world of getting publishers to love you. No, more let's make some scared. <laughs> we need more um, lonely female video game publisher CEOs. You would be doing much better if you could just gigolo out your wares using your body to sell your games. That makes me a prostitute. Yeah, I thought you were a prostitute at one point. It's part time. No, I wasn't ever a prostitute part time. I guess I had that wrong. I should check my facts. <laughs> it should sound so wrong. Now, now nobody's ever, ever going to want to find out any of my games. This prostitute, woman, man, what else could that be? <laughs> uh, hopefully our, uh, our industry will get a little more progressive and they won't be so discriminatory against prostitutes and half man, half woman. Uh, yeah. Nope. Destructoid has ruined you yet again. Well, I think that's just about it. Time to wrap up, I suppose. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Luke. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to all of your games. I hope you keep us uh, well informed. You didn't actually mention Reaper. Is that one I can still be excited about? Yes, 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 I've got about that one. The only reason why it's been just been postponed, I don't have much longer, but it's just been postponed because we've just been working on making sure the engine is a lot better and all those things, but we want to basically make it really great. That's why instead of releasing something that's, you know, it's just taking longer. Just basically I use the, method, the new engine, which is blah. I don't right. have enough time, I don't. Yeah, but you're working out the king. Yeah, so done. Reaper, there's three games on hold. Imagination is the only escape. Reaper, oh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Mecha Wars 2 is coming out next month? Jesus, it's that was Alpha this month. So alpha month, alpha. I'm it's sorry. But it might come out shortly after that? Probably, yes. Now they're telling us to say goodbye. Let's go away. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you for being on the show, Luke. Be on again someday, you don't mind? No, never. Thanks. I had a great time.
That's it. That's my genuine smile. This is my fake smile. It's my genuine smile. What, actually, which one's pretty? Did it wrap up yet? I think we wrapped up. I just. Well, first, Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Stop, Holmes.